What's up everyone? In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a grand tour of my outdoor shower and bath. I laid pavers with a French drainage system. I've got cedar and steel privacy walls. I've got a propane gas water heater, a cowboy tub, a Hans Grohe shower system, and a corrugated metal gate. With the exception of the metal fence, which I installed about two months ago, this was all built exactly a year ago and it's been holding up really well. If you want to see the actual building process of all this, you can check out my shorts here on YouTube. I've posted numerous videos about this project. But I'm going to give you a full rundown of what I did with the space because maybe you're interested in homesteading or off-grid living or maybe you already own a home and you just want a spot where you can shower under the stars. I built this spot out of necessity because I was sick of making the hour and a half round trip to Planet Fitness to shower every night. Got a bunch of rain this morning since we're right in the middle of monsoon season here in Tucson. Of course, before you start a project like this, you have to make sure you have access to a water supply. I've got my shower and hot water heater running off a basic garden hose, but you're gonna need a water supply, whether it's city water, or a shared well like I have, or if you're hauling water, a tank and pump system. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did all the plumbing in here, but before we get to that, I wanna show you the flooring, the paver installation. I first dug down about a foot below surface level, installed some landscaping fabric, put down six inches of gravel base, some leveling sand, and laid these 12 by 12 concrete pavers on top of it, which I got cheap from Home Depot. In the gaps between, I've used standard polymeric sand, and though some of it's washed away, most of it's held up great. It helps direct the water off to the sides. No need to pour concrete or even use a floor drain. The drainage system I used here is a French drain. These are typically used in landscape applications, not shower installs, but for this build, it makes sense. I dug trenching around three sides of the shower and used a combination of perforated drain pipe, landscaping fabric, and river rock to make sure all that water runoff drains properly. What that allows is all that excess water to soak through the rock and into the drain pipe where it then disperses it throughout the landscaping so it doesn't all pool up in one place. Unlike black water and sewer line, shower runoff and soapy water is considered gray water and that's typically okay to allow to drain into your surroundings but it's going to be dependent on your county and your local jurisdiction so make sure you check with them before installing a system like this. For the walls I set 4x4 four four treated posts in concrete. I attached some steel channel to that with screws and laid this whitewash cedar all the way across and to keep those planks from bowing and warping I used 1 8 steel straps on both directions and bolted them together. This did require a bit of welding in some areas but I love how it came out. The design style of the wood and rusted metal is just what I was looking for. Admittedly my welds are not the best but it only adds to the character of it all. The latest and final addition to this shower was this front gate. Now I used scrap pieces from my front fence to build it but it came out pretty good. For the post I was obviously able to weld these two, but for the wood posts, I had to use an epoxy glue. Unfortunately, a couple weeks ago, I backed into that post with my van, so the door is not quite hung right, and it's a little challenge to open, but it still latches okay. Let's get on to the plumbing. Like I said earlier, I used a basic garden hose, and that runs into a splitter. The cold water line here goes directly into the thermostatic valve of the shower head while the hot water line here goes to the propane water heater. And I also have this water dish for the stray dogs and animals that come around. And if you're wondering what happened to Beanie Weenie, the two Chihuahua Corgi mixes or whatever the hell they were, they disappeared. I don't know where the hell they went, uh, but hopefully they're living good. On this side of the wall, you'll see the water line feeding into a quarter turn shutoff attached to my Camplux water heater. This is a propane gas on-demand water heater that uses two D batteries to light the pilot. It has all these knobs here that are supposed to control the temperature of the outgoing water, but they're kind of useless. In fact, I wouldn't recommend anybody buy this. There's no internal thermostat, meaning you can't really control the temperature of the water that comes out of it. In my case, since I'm in Arizona, the water coming out of that hose is already lukewarm. Sometimes it's already a bit hot. So when it comes out of here, it is scalding. It burns your flesh off. The company advertises this as a product where you can screw a shower head right into this outlet and have a nice temperature water to shower with, but that's just not the case. For that reason, I rely on the mixing valve of the shower to control the water temperature. I've got the hot and cold feeding into this so I can use these dials to get it where I want. <laughs> I picked out a dual head shower system with both a body spur and rainfall shower head from Hans Grohe. I had to get a little creative with how I mounted this thing because it did have to get positioned higher than the fence line. 
Because the piping back here is exposed and visible, I went with copper for the aesthetic, but you could also probably go with CPVC as long as it's something that will hold up in UV light. Yes, I burned the hell out of that wood trying to solder, but at least there's no leaks. Just make sure you don't use something like PEX because that will degrade in sunlight. Because the temperature control is over here, I had to get a little creative with how I fill up the tub. Rather than have a spigot, I just take this off and drop it in there. It's not the best solution, but it's functional. If you're a farmer or rancher, you're probably already familiar with these, but it's just a galvanized steel livestock tank that I'm using as a bathtub. If you do install a bathtub like this, make sure you have that spigot feeding directly into your French drain, because that thing can hold almost 200 gallons, and you do not want that spilling out into your river rock. It's just gonna puddle up. It's not gonna drain fast enough. So this is the setup you want. It makes for an affordable bathtub. It's great for outdoor use. It's very spacious for those days you wanna enjoy the weather or the nights you wanna enjoy the stars. And shout out my neighbor for giving me this turf mat. Much nicer to stand on with bare feet than concrete. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope I gave you some ideas for your own shower setup. But do me a favor, like the video, comment down below what you want to see next. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and I'll see you next time.